Yeah. yeah. So what brought you over to Australia then? Um, so I used to be a chef. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So awesome. after the art phase, there was yeah. a hospitality phase. Good. Um, I, I qualified as a chef back in New Zealand and my lifestyle was quite like party, um, hosp- that whole hospitality sort of yeah. like stereotypical lifestyle, I guess. And I didn't really have many like goals or aspirations in terms of doing anything other than getting as fucked up as I could yeah. as often as possible. Yeah, that's a good goal. It was, it was great. Know, yeah. Like I had a good time. Easy goal. Yeah. As long as you maintain it. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that was the problem. I was maintaining it yeah. like too consistently. Um, and uh, someone suggested to me, because I was in that one of those sort of like rut sort of phases mm. where I was like, where am I going with my life? What am I doing? Um, obviously, running away from all of your problems um, is quite an appealing um, yes. aspect. Yes. So, yeah, so someone said, oh, you know what? You'd, you'd really fit in in Melbourne. I don't know really? why. I, I don't know why they said wow. that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I've never been here before. You do? I, I do, but, right? Yeah. So we're right. Yeah. But, like, I'd never been here before. Mm. Um, but I was just like, fuck it. So, I it. yeah, I just moved over here. Um, and I fucking hated it. Oh, really? <laughs> it was like, you know those days where it's like hot, but it's also windy? Oh, yeah. And you're like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. And that's like not a thing in New Zealand. Like, yeah. if it's windy, it's cold. Yeah, yeah. And I just didn't understand it. And yeah. it was just awful. And I remember like lying on the floor in my friend's house, my like <laughs> one friend that I had over here, and like crying like a fucking bitch and being like, I want to go home. Like, this sucks. Yeah. Why is it hot and windy? Like, this is the worst place ever. Um <laughs> The weather like, really does make a difference. Yeah, here. it was awful. I know. God. And whenever it's like that now, it like brings me back to that moment, like yeah. seven years ago, where I was like, "Fuck this place." Yeah, you're like traumatized from that <laughs> one day. It was like probably like in a sea of like good weather, but that one day, yeah, like, fuck you, that so one bad. Day, it was <laughs> yeah. so terrible. Um, but yeah, I had a job, so I qualified as a chef, obviously, and I had a job already lined up. Okay. Um, over here, and just coincidentally it happened to be in the area that I still live okay. um so I just ended up getting a share house and you know working as a chef for like a couple of years before I realized that I kind of hated that mm. um and then along the way I kind of ditched all my like drinking drug taking smoking all the negative habits mm. and kind of went the opposite direction and just became really obsessed with being like as fit and as healthy yep um as I could yep and because I've always been the sort of person who, like, I can't just have a hobby. I'm going to, like, be fucking obsessed with that thing. Mm-hmm. Because in my mind, like, that's the only way you can be good at something is you've got to be obsessed with it. Yeah. You know? Um, so I decided I wanted to do it as a career. Um, and then I did my Cert 3 and 4 in fitness. Um, and then got a job at a gym. And then found CrossFit. And that was when I met you. Yes. <laughs> I know. That was good. I'm just interested in what you... Because it's so difficult for people to... Um, transcend their addictions to put a, a bit of jargon over it but like you, you seem to from, from your story then just to being able to remove yourself from, from the drugs and the smoking and the, and the alcohol um, pretty pretty easily was it was it a difficult process or was it just something that happened over time the more you got into training and, and, and health well I had like a really bad period when I was younger when I was smoking meth and okay. I had like a really um, I was in a really abusive relationship um, and I kind of just was just a big clusterfuck of just like shit things, mm. um, hanging out with like shit people and being a shit person myself. Yeah. Um, and it just all kind of got just way out of hand and I tried to kill myself. Right. And after that, it was kind of like, like a good thing in a way, because you know how sometimes you get so far to the bottom mm. that it kind of like sparks this new sort of lease on like no, I can fucking get through this. And it's sort of almost like a light bulb moment of like, I'm just going to change like everything Mm. about my life. So I kind of had one of those moments and that was before I moved over here. Okay. And I think like I sort of had the same, a similar sort of moment again, like maybe like five years later Mm. where I was like, I'm just doing the same fucking thing again. Like not to, not to the extreme that I was doing, but the same, like, I don't really have a goal. I don't really have ambition. I'm not really trying to be better. Mm-hmm. I'm just being like just an average piece of shit. And just that realization, 
like makes you be like fuck that yeah you know? it, yeah and so i guess i had one of those moments again um and that again spurred me to just go the opposite direction again and get really fit get really healthy yeah um but i haven't had another fallback off the wagon good. so far good <laughs> <laughs> so we'll touch the wood yeah. and hopefully that was my last one